When someone clicks on this like button right here, I want this increment function to actually run. And the way that we do that is we simply add an on click equals this dot props dot increment. Now that's going to be this action creator right here. It's going to run increment and we're going to pass it the index. So zero, one, two, three, you get the point. So how do we pass it the number like zero to, uh, we already have a variable called I, which is the index. That's good. So we could just do that, but you'll know that that would just run it on page load, which is not what we want. So uh, there's a couple of ways that you can pass uh, an argument to a function on click and uh, you can choose your own way. Uh, my favorite way is just to call dot bind. You pass null as the first one because React does all of the binding for us. And then you pass the, uh, the first parameter uh, as the second one here. So if I give that a save now and I'm going to go to my console here and whoa, looks like we got a whole whack of errors going on here. It says uh, there's another module with equal name when case is ignored. Uh, I wasn't sure what this was, but I gave it a quick Google and I realized that when I imported React right here, I put a capital R on it. That should be lowercase r. So give that a save, clear out, give it a good refresh and you're, you're good to go. So we just hooked up the button with bind. And now when I click that button, what should happen is what's this? Ooh, all of our reducers are now running. So we just created an action that got fired off or dispatched as we call it in Redux. And now we actually need to open up our posts reducer and start handling the actual increment of the actual like. In Redux, we use a functional programming. And what's really important about that is that we do not mutate our state and we use what's called pure functions. I wanna take a little bit of an aside and, and sort of explain what these things actually are because we, we seem to hear about it a lot. And if you're not sure exactly what they are, then it can come back to bite you when you write it. So you we have our reducer right here and you might think like, oh, incremental like, that's pretty easy. We take the state, uh, we find the action dot I, which, which would be like action of zero. And we just take the likes value and increment it by one and we're done, call it a day, go get a beer. But that's not exactly how we do it because what we're doing is we're simply mutating something that is outside of this actual function, right? And that is not a pure function. Now, a pure function is a predictable function. When we've got some code right here that takes in a picture, increments the number of likes and returns it. So if we have a picture variable and we pass that function with 10 likes, every single time that we pass it with 10 likes, it should always return it with 11 likes. That's what a pure function is. Uh, this makes it easier for testing as well as it, it's going to open up the whole world of Redux dev tools and time travel and all this great stuff. So here I have coded a impure function and you can see that uh, right here, we're taking this object, which is has a name and the number of likes. And we call add like, add like, add like. We call the same code three times. However, every single time we're getting a different result and that's what makes it an impure function. So what we can do uh, to fix this is that we essentially we take a copy of this object or we take a copy of an array if it's in that case, we modify it and then we return the new state. So we don't modify the old state, we simply just take a copy and return the new state. So how would I fix something like this? Well, I'm gonna go right here. I am gonna paste in my new code right here. And what I've done here is we take a copy, uh, it's an object spread that we pass here. And then we, we use, uh, but we can't exactly use that just yet. So I'm using object.assign, uh, which is taking an a blank object and applying each of the properties onto this blank object. Then I increment the likes and then I console log and return it. So now we see that we're, we're calling add like, add like, add like three times and we get 11, 11, 11. That is a predictable, that is a pure function, and we are not mutating an external state. It's gonna open up a whole new world to us. So with that in mind, let's go back to our code here, and let's start coding whatever goes on in our reducer. So what happens in the reducer is that whenever you click this button right here, we are running all of the reducers. And this increment likes right here 
is what we need to act on. We use a switch statement to be able to act on that. So we'll say switch on action dot type, right? Because the type is going to be increment likes. And in this case, we only have one possible scenario, but when we get to comments, we're gonna have a couple more scenarios that we can uh, work on. And you can say case increment likes. So if it is an increment likes, then we are going to uh, return the updated state. And then we always give a default state, which is just going to be simply return state. And I can go ahead and delete that one. So why did we do that? Because remember we said that all of the reducers always run for every single one. And if we are not acting on that specific one, like the comments reducer will run, but if it doesn't care about increment likes, it's just going to return the default state and not do anything. But in this case, the increment likes, so we're gonna do console log incrementing likes. And I'm just gonna open up the comments reducer real quick as well. And I'm gonna take that console log out of there so we can keep our console nice and clean. Refresh. Now when we go ahead and click that, it says incrementing likes every single time that we actually click it. And here is where we go ahead and update the state. So we are going to return a new array here. And this is a little bit tricky, but essentially what needs to happen if we take a look at our actual state here is we have our posts and we want to return this entire array, but only change one of them with the likes one. So uh, we could do that with array concat and, and take a copy of the array and, and return it. Um, but we are using ES6 spread here, which will uh, do essentially the exact same thing. So I'm going to take the state dot slice from zero to wherever the index is. So we're gonna take everything up and to, uh, maybe we'll put a comment before the one we are updating. And then I'm gonna do the last part as well, which is we wanna go from the increment plus one, and this is everything after the one we are updating. And then in between, what we wanna do is pass it a new object, right? Because like, let's say we're updating the third one. So this is two. We wanna take a copy of this actual object because the rest of these are just references to the old one. We're not changing them, so that's totally fine. But since we are changing this one, we need to take a copy of this actual object right here. So we will use uh, an object spread right here, which is state square bracket i, and that will take everything, but then we are also going to tack on the new number of likes, which is going to be the state of i, which let's say we're updating the third one, state square bracket two dot likes plus one, and that is going to return the new value. So uh, this dot dot dot, that is a spread, which is going to update it. Um, it's very similar right here to using object.assign where it will take a copy of the actual element and then we return that entire array. So it takes in state, takes everything before and after, and then just updates the one post that we actually want. So I'll give that a save and we'll go over here. And now when we click on this 56 here, open up our console here, we get incrementing. Oh, I got to give it a quick refresh because you can't hot reload those. But you see now, oh, I is not defined. What we forgot to do here is right inside of this case, we're gonna say const I equals action dot index, right? Because we we sent over that index value there. Give it a refresh, click it. Hey, hey, look, it's working. That is so much fun. Uh, it's incrementing the likes every single time. Click it, click it, click it over and over. And uh, we are simply updating state and then React takes over from there. It, it has a virtual DOM and it's going to do all of the updating wherever we're referencing that actual piece of state. So that is our first reducer.